Okay, children, this is Grandma Carla, and this is Abby Lost at Sea, and it is Chapter 8. I'm sorry that I've been so long since I last saw you. I've had a very busy week grading lots of papers, so it's finally Saturday, so I can read to you a little bit. Chapter 8. Only two more days to go, Abby thought one afternoon as she sat learning how to tie nautical knots from Kimo, the big Hawaiian. She had already learned how to tie the bowline and the half hitch, but Kimo seemed intent on teaching her how to tie a rope bracelet like the one he wore. When we land in Oahu, I show you how to make plenty bracelets with puka shell, he said with a wink. Then you look pretty, Wahine. My mother, Olani, she teach you to make island lei, too. Abby grinned at the offer. I look forward to meeting her, Kimo. Is she as kind as you? The large man smiled, smiled proudly. Olani is like Goddess Pele, who spits fire from mountain. My mother is Alihi, from royal family. She big and beautiful, tall like me. But Olani, wide. He stretched his arms out, like royal chiefess should be. Her hair, like mountain mist, and sometimes she spit fire, too. He laughed at his own joke. You will know her. She live in Kaluha, where, her, her, where your uncle live. Everyone there know Olani. It will be a real pleasure to know someone from the royal family, Abby said, her eyes shining. Since they sat in a bulkhead near the jolly boat, she hoped Luke would hear their conversation. Kimo looked up to the east. We be there quick. I think I smell storm. We ride storm home. Abby's eyes followed his, but she could not see any sign of an approaching storm. Maybe, she said doubtfully. Kimo grinned. No, maybe. It will come, he promised. Abby bent over the rope and retied the knot she just let slip. She couldn't help but wonder if a big storm hits, will Luke be all right? The sky darkened early. By six, the usually balmy wind turned cold, and the sky hovered overhead with black, threatening clouds. Captain McDonald ordered the crew to trim the ship sails. When the rain began, it was not a steady patter of drops. It seemed a celestial floodgate had opened, and the water sheeted down in liquid walls. While the sailors scurried for their oil skins, Captain McDonald ordered all passengers to stay below decks for the duration of the storm. The one good thing about being coped up in their cooped up in their tiny cabin was being able to eat there. Pa had gone to get the simple meal of hardtack biscuits and cheese and had distributed it to the family. Abby secreted two biscuits and a cheese chunk in her hanky under her pillow for Luke. Now, as she and Sarah clung to their berth, that night, he tried and tried to sleep. She hoped the storm would blow over before she had to go topside. For three hours, the intrepid pitched and rolled like a bucking mule. Abby lay in bed, worried about Luke. At last, she had a warm bunk to toss. At least she had a warm bunk to toss in. He was being tossed about on the hardwood planks of the jolly boat. Finally, when the storm quieted briefly, Abby's parents and Sarah fell asleep. Then Abby climbed out of bed carefully and slipped into her blue chambray dress. It took a minute to locate her shoes. They had been tossed into, a, into different corners of the tiny cabin. Normally she went in her stocking feet, but with wet deck she decided to wear her boots. With her pockets full of biscuits and cheese, Abby left her cabin and started for the hatch. She could hear the rain pounding on the deck and knew she was bound to be drenched by the time she got to Luke's hideout. As she opened the hatch, the cold wind whipped her hair across her face. Rain sloshed down on her head and poured down her neck. Ugh, she said, grimacing as she lurched into the pitching deck. The ship keeled over to starboard and Abby skittered across the slippery deck toward the railing. She grabbed onto the rigging and held fast, watching the lanterns at either end of the ship swing wildly in the storm. Thunder boomed and suddenly lightning split the sky with the jagged slash of a white hot knife. 
Abby immediately ducked down to avoid being seen. She inched along the middle deck toward the jolly boat. The rain, rain stung her face and soaked through her dress. As she neared the skiff, another bolt of lightning hit the sea several hundred yards ahead. At the same moment, thunder boiled overhead with a deafening crash. Abby screamed, but her voice drowned in the howling wind and thunder. When she reached the boat, when she reached the boat, she flipped up the corner of the tarp, then dropped in the jar of water and threw herself in after it. She landed on Luke, who cried, Ouch! It's terrifying out there. Drenched and shaking, she clung to him. Abby, you shouldn't have come. He gingerly put his arm around her wet shoulders. Don't try to go back in the storm right now. It's too dangerous. You could be washed overboard. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere, but you have to eat. Thunder rumbled overhead. When lightning flashed, the brightness penetrated even the heavy tarp, and Abby watched Luke's face pale with fear. The waves mounted and crashed over the intrepid, tossing the ship like a cougar tosses a meadow mouse. Under the tarp, Abby and Luke clung to each other and the sides of the lolly, jolly boat, but they received a beating as they were thrown from side to side. Though it was already, it had already raged for hours, the storm grew more furious. Towering waves crashed over the deck and dangerously tipped the ship. Abby slammed into Luke as the intrepid's bow disappeared under a wall of water, and the boat keeled over sharply. The starboard bulkhead, which the jolly boat fastened onto, submerged under the foaming sea. Abby clutched Luke's shirt as the jolly boat lifted, lifted slightly, then dragged under the washing water, rushing water. Hang on, Abby, you, Luke yelled. If the tarp rips off, we could go into the water. Suddenly, they heard the snap of one of the rusted brackets holding the jolly, ba jolly boat in place. The little boat swung outward at the bow in the mighty surge of water. Abby's breath caught as she heard the stern bracket snap as well. Now free, the jolly boat plunged into the storm-tossed sea. As the little boat dove into the waves, the tarp momentarily kept it from flooding and sinking. But as the skiff resurfaced, the portion above Luke ripped off and he flew over the side as the jolly boat tipped in the heaving waves. Abby's hand, which had been clenching his shirt in a death grip, refused to let go. She lunged to the edge of the skiff, her arm dragging downward by his weight. Luke, she screamed, but the wind snatched her words. Luke's head disappeared underwater, and Abby got a mouthful of ocean as the jolly boat tipped sideways. It's going down, she thought in horror. Still, she did not let go of his shirt. In a mo moment, Luke resurfaced. He grabbed the side of the dunking skiff and hauled himself back onto it. Both of them lay gasping and soaked in the water as in the water pouring into the bottle, bottom of the boat. We've got to start bailing, Luke choked as he hauled up the bucket that, he had, that had been tied inside the stern. In the midst of the black storm, the jolly boat rode the rolling waves like a cork bobbing along a white water river. Abby sat beside Luke, but in the dark she could barely make him out. She could just see the movement of his arms as he began bailing. Another wave hit the boat and slapped Abby in the face. Her long hair dripped like wet laundry on the line, and her teeth chattered with the cold. Here, Abby, Luke ordered as he handed her the bucket. Bail, and you'll warm up. She took the wooden bucket and began to bail, dipping the bucket into the foot of the water again and again and dumping it over the side. She bailed furiously for several minutes, but it didn't help. She shivered just as hard because it wasn't only the cold that made her shake. Fear gripped her heart as she looked through the rain for the lanterns from the intrepid. They were nowhere to be seen. Luke, she gasped, dropping the bucket in panic. We're alone, alone and adrift on a huge Pacific Ocean. Terror gripped her. She leaned against Luke's side for comfort, but when she felt him tremble, she began to cry. Can we survive, Lord? And that is the end of chapter 8 with Luke and Abby lost at sea.